show where you are at. I put them both in the air, Jeff. But the problem is... I was is, like, yeah, I'm a bad badass! When uh, he asks everyone to throw the finger in the air to show him where he's at, isn't it kind of hard to, to point, pinpoint <laughs> who he's looking for? It's kind of like if everybody, everybody just, does it. Everybody's just flipping him off at that point. They're all facing him. Uh, it so, was, uh, Kid Rock uh, version 3.0, how was it? It was good. It was actually better than the last time he came. He, the guy was like, he came out, he, he was awesome. I can't say I stayed to the very end, and I probably should have, because uh, I don't think it went on much longer after we left, but uh, it was it was a really good show. Now, uh, the merch, did you get a chance to see the merch table at all? I walked by the merch table, and I uh, I did not see... You did not take inventory. ...the Mental. vote for Kid Rock, but he was wearing a, a vote for Kid Rock t-shirt Did it say night. Kid Rock for Senate? Uh, I said Kid Rock 18, and yeah, it probably said Senate on it or something like that, yeah. So he mm. was... He was wearing it. He made uh, he made one uh, reference to uh, the fact that he wants to run, but uh, in kind of a it, tongue-in-cheek way. In tw- so he actually runs in twenty eighteen. Is that the is that the deal? Is that when the Senate seat is up? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, but that was, just- I was. I was thinking. You know, if it was this year, he was a little late to the game. But I guess that's not the case. I tell you what. I've been to. Uh, God, is there, I've really been to every concert so far at the fair since it started. Oh, and this, was, this was the well. That's nothing that's that dedication. I'm proud of. Dedication, nothing that my I'm friend. proud of. But uh, because except for Lionel Richie, I told you that was special. And then the Zach Brown Band was good. It wasn't. It wasn't what I remember for the past, but it was still a good show. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Friday night, I stopped by the Chainsmokers for a little bit. It was like some sort of uh, you know, uh, know it all. Craig would have loved that. It was all like. <laughs> And they had, they had like cool fires and fireworks and stuff like that. But anyways, this show was the best. It was it was the uh, it was the most intense. Who opened for Kid Rock besides Matt on the uh, island stage? <laughs> Matt over there. He's a, sitting over there by himself. He's wearing a yellow t shirt because he's on an island stage. I'm convinced he wore he picked that color on purpose just to look tropical. Uh, I don't know who the band was. I think they were from L.A. Okay, and I probably should know because did you like them? Uh, I was I, I was I was there when they were getting ready to go on. Uh, I didn't. I, I left. No, oh. that was like my break that I could go get something to eat before Kid Rock started. Uh-huh. So I took off and I finally went and got some Big Bubba ribs. And they were they does were, the they were Sunday good. night Kid Rock show take anything away from it because it's Sunday night? I would yeah, say I mean, it was about uh, two thirds full. Yeah. So okay. I mean, it's it was good. it was you know it's pretty good for the guy coming for the third time in like the last right. seven eight years or something like that. You yeah. Know what I mean? So I mean because. It, chances are, if I've seen him the first two times, or even one of the first two times, then you know you weren't going to go back and make it a, a return visit. You know what I'm saying? No, I hear what you're saying. I was a little like the Tim McGraw dynamic. If, I, if I like it was a Friday or Saturday night, I think the party would have been a lot better. You but uh, it was a Sunday night. But they, you know, I mean, the concert should was have switched Saturday show with last night's show. Switch them around. Yeah. County Crows uh, and, and Matchbox Twenty on a Sunday night, maybe. maybe I would have went to bed a lot better. earlier if it was County Crows last night because they put me to sleep on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, and and, was and the fu- sun was still up too, yeah, because yeah. it was right in his oh, eyes. Yeah, it, was, it was awful. It was right in his eyes because you and I have had to go up there and make announcements before, and we know what that's like when the sun's right in your eyes. I, what was the deal with the lights at that show? They had like the light. They still went through with the lights, but the sun was bearing down on the on the band and everything that was going on there. So they were still running the lights in the background, but all you could see was these like the little flash. Because you know when the sun when it's fighting with the brightest sun, yeah, so the brightest light in the galaxy, was, uh, the, the, that's a problem. I was talking to the uh, the stage manager last night. Before we went up there to do our thing for Kid Rock, and I said, uh, "So, uh, you know, does Rock have any pyrotechnics tonight?" He goes, "Oh yeah," and he kind of tells me about it. And I said, uh, "What about that Chain Smoker show?" And he goes, "Oh yeah, that was pretty big time." He says, "But uh, he says, you know, the show that had nine semi trucks was the uh, County Crows in Matchbox Twenty <laughs> tour because they're touring together." Yeah. So they brought all that stuff. They mm-hmm. set everything up that mm-hmm. no one could see. Nobody could see it at all. And then it took them almost forty five minutes to tear it all yeah, down and the, then set up Matchbox Twenty. It was pointless. <laughs> it was pointless because nobody could see the lights. Except You're talking like, about maybe the last two songs. A bad you know? day at work when you're pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you did all that work for nothing. 
<laughs> the lighting manager's just like, oh, yeah, well, good thing I uh, came to work today. It's I mean, because they could have put a black backdrop up there and still been fine. It's You know what's weird about the fair to me is it's like, what is it, 13 days or 12 days or something like that? And it's just nonstop concert every night. I mean, it's just like, where do you go where you have concerts night after night after night after night? And they're big acts, and these guys are having to deal with tearing down a stage and putting it back together. Different crews coming through. Um that's why that's why fair management does a, a fine job of basically uh, maintaining that because you have these different people coming through night after night. I heard something um, going to the Matchbox Twenty and County Crows show on Saturday night. I guess they had canceled the night before in San Jose. The show in San Jose never went off. Oh, really? They had to refund everybody the tickets, and then they play the next night the California Mid State Fair. Because there were people that were, like, worried about the fact that they might not show up. You might get show. Motley Crude. Yeah, they were worried about getting Motley Crude. And uh, that wasn't the case. Maybe they were just, they had their eyes on Paso Robles. <laughs> That's a good thing they did. <laughs> the San Jose, ah, forget about it. We're, but, we're, 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 we're focusing towards Paso Robles. Zach Brown band started at 7.30 on uh, Thursday. And uh, it, it was insane, the line trying to get to that arena. I can't even imagine what happens when Garth Brooks plays two shows oh, there on Thursday. Complete insanity. People think I'm crazy because I just want to see it go down. I want to see... I guess they've hired special crews to come in and do all that stuff. But Yeah, yeah you want to go sit in the top of the bleachers that, the, that are facing the crowd. Right. And, and just watch... And just watch... Every, the, like do a time lapse happen. of everything uh, take place. How pathetic can some people be? This is how pathetic my life is. I owe my 11-year-old $6 for Girl Scout cookies, <laughs> and I'm dodging her. <laughs> and she calls me for the money and tries to be slick and disguise her voice, but I know it's her. <laughs> so she'll go, hello? <laughs> Is daddy home? Dumbass of the day. 93.3 KZOZ. So a little girl in San Francisco was inspired to open up her own small business. Gotcha. What is the small business that little girls usually open up? Lemonade stand. Yes. Nice. Sell some cookies on the side, too, if you can. She was all good to go when her parents told her that she was allowed to sell lemonade and cookies at a public area for an hour in Discovery Bay. Okay. Some little area up in the Bay Area there. Uh, the stranger comes up to her. Wait a she second. Said, she, only, only, she can only sell lemonade for an hour yeah, after only, she spent only all that time hour. building her stand and making her little signs. I, now I'm in the I'm in the process of um, building a, a lemonade stand uh, with my daughter. Right. This and, is a project, and we're, and we're taking like you know the crowbar to the pallet board, and we're you know building the stand. We're going to paint it and make the little sign. This girl threw up a couple of those ch- tables, you know that. Have the legs that fold out and uh, put up, uh, okay. uh, put a, a thing, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, like it's like one of those Rubbermaid tables. It's yes, not like she built yes. a stand. And then she put like a tablecloth down, and then got some signs, you know, that she made. It, it, it's it's a nice looking stand, but it's not, you know, anything that was, you know, she put a lot of labor into. Anyways, um, she was only going to sell it for an hour. But then within that hour, a stranger comes up to her and asked her where her license was. Man pulls up next to her in his car and says, hey, where's your business license? She said, I don't have a business license. I don't know what you're talking about. My parents told me I can just sit up here on the corner and sell, <laughs> sell lemonade. He goes, that's it. I'm calling the police. Then he got on the phone and began speaking as if he was talking to the police. She quickly packed up her <laughs> lemonade stand and called her dad and said, come pick me up. How old is she again? Uh, is she like 10? Like 9, uh, I think. You just leave your wait, You just leave your kid somewhere on the street selling lemonade at 9 years old? Uh, I think, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm just looking at a picture of her right now. They don't really say her age and thing. I'd say she's about 9 or 10. Uh, she cried when she got home out of fear that she, she was something was going to, she was going to go to jail. Uh, her dad told her, you know, that others in the community were in full support of her business. In fact, they told her, I'll tell you what, uh, th- later on this week, you can open the uh, lemonade stand right outside the house. So that's what she did. And the dad kind of shared the story on social media. So she ended up selling out a lemonade, in f- in- including 
two uh, police officers that came by to uh, show support for right, right. for the stand. And they didn't check and, for a business and, license. And they, and they let her know that it was okay, that she was setting is it up. Just, is it not odd to you being a father that they would just, you know, the first time it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been in front of their house where they set up the lemonade stand? Hey, you got to go they where the money drop is. drop her off and they're like, all right, sell some lemonade. you got to go where the money is. Apparently, go. Discovery Bay is yeah. thirsting for some lemonade. Well, no, I know what you mean. I mean, there was neighborhoods that you would want to trick or treat mm-hmm. as a kid because they'd give you, like, full candy bars. So yeah, you gotta you wanna, go you, where, the, where the money flows. You want, you want to have them on a, in a uh, in a safe place. So what I happened? Think, I this, think Discovery Bay is like an attraction. Anything come of this ass that uh, that harassed this nine year old as she tried to sell lemonade? They ever track him down? No, they didn't. That guy needs to be tracked down, right? I mean, I'm just gonna say, listen, there is a chance that maybe she's smarter than she than everybody gives her credit for. She made up this whole story just so she could uh, sell lemonade in front of her house, so she didn't have to pack her lemonade. I don't know to Discovery Bay, and and so her dad could get five percent of the profits. <laughs> what you think he was taking a cut? <laughs> I remember I, I set up a lemonade stand once. I did it for about an hour, oh, and I was like, yeah. "Okay, I lost I'm over an this. hour too. I'm over this." I've made I've made uh, my mom's grand plan was to uh, say that it costs seven cents, but then cross out the seven cents and charge them a nickel, because then it makes it look like they're getting a deal. Well, nobody bid on that, mom. We I sp- think I sold two glasses of lemonade. One was to mom. Yeah, right. We spent I don't know hours and a whole half a day building this stand. Uh, we uh, we threw up cardboard on it and painted that, and then uh, the uh, the garbage man came by. He bought the whole picture. He filled up a one of those containers uh, <laughs> and, and for five bucks. Oh, that's and nice. we we're just sitting there with five bucks. I'm like, all right, well, we were too dumb to figure out. Well, who's gonna who? How are we gonna split this? I'm like, gonna... all right, well, here you can have three bucks. You did most of the hammering. <laughs> We're good? We're good. Call it a day. <laughs> yeah. Like, all right. That's uh, my jaunt into the lemonade business. Congratulations to the dummy that decided to make this girl cry. I mean, who was? Who tells a nine-year-old that, that you're calling the police on them? Me, because I don't like kids. You do. <laughs> no. Where were you last weekend? Where were you on the 17th, sir? Keep it local. Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. 93.3 KZOZ rocks. So the question I had for Kid Rock, anybody that went to the show last night, is how did they stop people from smoking cigarettes? Because I know that they've been pretty vigilant about keeping people. Although I did see a guy, this perfect place for somebody smoking a cigarette, smoking a cigarette in line to spin the wheel at the California lottery stand at the at the fair on my only foray into the fair last on Saturday night. I was like, wow, that's pretty brazen. But then again, you know, you're in line to win some scratchers. So right. go for it, man. I, you know, YOLO. I, you only live once, man. I don't know. You know, a lot of people would know that if they don't live around here that you can't smoke. So I think some of those people are just smoking because you'll see some people just standing there walking down the midway smoking a cigarette. Uh-huh. But I mean, most people you kind of see off hiding in the corners and on the first day, like I said uh, last week, I saw somebody get kicked out right away for smoking. And they were in the band playing on the Mission Square stage. They weren't they didn't get kicked out. They, well, they, they told to go to, outside to smoke and then yeah, come back in. Right, right. Kicked out's not the right word. You can have the re-entry. Yeah, so... But uh, with the, with the uh, concerts, you're not allowed re-entry with the concerts. You can, Once you go into the grandstand, you go in the grandstand and you're stuck in the grandstand. That's it. So... Uh, how are because I did notice some people smoking cigarettes. I got I saw like more people getting busted for smoking joints than I did uh, cigarettes. Okay, so how? But d- they were smoking. They always smoked those in the stands. And I, this is what I don't understand about that. And people got busted. Yeah, I didn't see a lot of people smoking cigarettes or having an issue with that at the Kid Rock show. Even though you would think that's where you yeah, see it. that would be cigarette town. But I I know that from being to other shows, if you go back to the back porta potties, there's usually some people <laughs> back there that are kind of congregated as the smoking area. But um, it's always surprised me in this day and age with these vape pens that you can get. Why people still think they have to bring pot and smoke it in the crowd? It's like you have to smell that skunky smell. I just like. Well, some people like this, like like that smell. Yeah, I know, they're, but I mean, you they, could you could get the same effect from one of those pens, and it doesn't smell like anything, and then you won't get busted. Yeah, people were literally. I understand, but people like the joints smell. were you being ripped that? out of mouths, stepped on, and then people were being escorted out. Really? And now you've lost out on you know seeing a show and some weed. Yeah, well, I'm sure that's not that big a deal. Because who wants to smoke to the weed after it's been stepped on on the grandstand floor? I mean, some later on, don't they have like a rodeo or something that comes in? Yeah. 
<laughs> What's tonight? I smoke that weed. Yeah, uh, that Hunter Hayes show tonight. That's uh, gonna, is, people is, is it John Mayer tonight? It's John Mayer. Is tonight. it John Mayer? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, people will be scraping up a little uh, <laughs> doobies off the ground. Oh, look at this squash doobie, man. So did you? But there was no like uh, smoking section that just kind of manifested last night. No, there's and that that would be the worst thing you could do there because if they see you smoking, they're going to ask you to put it out or to leave and go finish your cigarette somewhere else. So if you do want to smoke, I've noticed that people are kind of hiding in their own little corners, like trying to stay off to themselves, <laughs> or they're smoking in the Can porta potty. the strangest thing I saw at the fair on Saturday? So, um, you know, there's this, you know, I'm notoriously cheap, and I, the reason why I don't like the fair is because you go to the fair and you spend $10, $10 on, on a uh, hot dog. And, <laughs> and I'm like, wow, I just did it, you know, went ahead and blew my whole load for the day. Is uh, they have this little like outpost store there that is uh, is ran by Vons and Albertsons where you can go get like water for a oh cheaper... yeah 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 okay so you know by the that... good old burger yeah, like, yeah on the corner there yeah 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 it's uh, the south end of the uh, yeah. uh, of the of the thing it, it, nobody really knows mm. about it they sell like umbrellas and uh, sunscreen and diapers and baby food and stuff for people that are like working at the fair but also when I went up there to buy the Gatorade that I wanted um, I. <laughs> I look behind the counter. You know what they're selling? Cigarettes. Cigarettes. No way. <laughs> I know people have told me in years past that they, they sold cigarettes there. And I wanted to ask. I was like, and I was thinking, and I didn't even. Th I was just like, oh well, I'm not going to bother this kid. <laughs> I mean, he's like, you know, 16, working the stand. And I was like, I'm not going to bother for all them carnies, man. But they got to yeah, go back like, to their trailers. They how need do you to buy like? Why are they selling cigarettes there if you can't if you can't smoke at the fair? God, did you ask how you paid an ad? You didn't see how much they're going for, did you? No, I didn't. Probably like twelve bucks a pack or no, something. I have no interest. <laughs> it's been so long since I smoked that, like, like I see the prices now, and I just immediately know that that's why I don't smoke anymore. Is I see that seven because I think when I quit smoking, I they're like four dollars a pack. Well, you and quit even, smoking because even, even I've then, seen you. You can't you can't even take a drag of a cigarette now without coughing I can't, up a lung. I can't. And uh, it was nice because uh, well because I've learned how to breathe easier now that I don't smoke anymore, but. When I was smoking, four dollars a pack was too much. Now, see, that's seven, and I run in seven the, to eight. Seven to eight, depending where you're at. Yeah. I, I run in the other direction. Ninety-three point three KZOZ rocks. Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. Great white shark takes the We're goal. giving away a shark, beating out oh. Michael Phelps by two seconds. Where was this in your sports? <laughs> what, this, this, this wasn't this wasn't a real thing. Yeah, Shark Week doesn't make the sports roll. Sorry. Uh, so I, I thought this was I didn't even know this was a real thing. I thought somebody was joking on social media when I saw that they said Michael Phelps was going to race uh, a shark. But apparently uh, they uh, they set up a course. They did some special CGI graphics, and uh, people are pissed off. Why are they mad? Olivia says, I'm so disappointed because I thought Phelps was really going to race that shark. Come on. Like, like he was just going to be side by side? Discovery Channel has come out and said, listen, no, it was never going to be a thing. We thought everybody knew that BS. They knew there was a lot of dumb people out there that would believe just about anything. What's the first thing that crosses your mind, though? Uh, when Michael Phelps is going to race a shark. Do you think they're going to be side-by-side side or is it going to be like a time trial? Yeah, yeah, it's not going to be side-by-side. It's going to be a time trial. Because if it could be side-by-side, side, everybody's going to be talking about the action in Vegas on is the shark going to eat Michael Phelps <laughs> when he catches it. But, you know, I guess so what they did was they just uh, they took uh, some sharks. They had them, what, swim the course at some point in time, and then they had Michael Phelps swim a course somewhere else. But it was the same amount of uh, space. And the same conditions, too. And the same conditions and so all that kind of stuff. So he was swimming in cold water. In fact, I guess uh, he is blaming, not blaming, but he is attributing his loss to the shark to... Uh, that it wasn't in an 85-degree pool, Olympic-sized yeah, pool? It, it was because he was not used to uh, the conditions. It's so cold. Yeah, it's crazy. Like that, when I was sitting there, before I dove in, I knew how cold it was going to be. Why is the why did the uh, cold water change his voice to uh, make him sound like he was British? What you ever jump uh, in some really cold water? <laughs> sounds, <laughs> sounds like he's Roy McElroy's brother. Yeah, I've always been crazy. Like that. When I was sitting there before I dove in, I knew how cold it was going to be, and I knew that for me as a swimmer, we don't swim in this. So it basically he sounds like Bear Grylls. <laughs> he does, doesn't he? <laughs> he does. Is it the music in the background that's making him sound like that? Is it Bear Grylls or was it Michael Phelps? That's what I thought it was. We don't swim in this. So <laughs> it basically just shocks our entire body. 
formula. It shocks us into a new accent that we've never even knew existed in our coming out of our mouths. It basically just shocks our entire body. And I have a little tiny wetsuit on, so it's absolutely freezing. Yeah. The decision to go with the one millimeter wetsuit did not pay off. Yeah, but. What, if he would have went with a thicker wetsuit, he would have been a little bit warmer, but then they he, that more, would have been more constrictive. You think they could have gone to like a warmer place, you know, more tropical place with warmer ocean water and, you know, just try to recreate I don't think the, the Great White. I don't think the Great White will, uh, it's like, you know. The Great White smoked him by two seconds, but he did beat the Reef Shark. So he, you know, if, if you happen to be swimming with a fin. Reef Shark swims in warmer water, right? Right. So Not as deep. Yeah, he, he wasn't able to beat the hammerhead. He was close. It was a close race, but he missed the hammerhead and the great white. Both would have got him. The you know what it tells me? It tells me Michael Swelps is a fast swimmer. <laughs> yeah, but he had a fin on. It wasn't like he was out there swimming like he does in the pool. He had a fin on just like a shark did. So anybody could probably do that. Anybody? That's in good anybody. shape. It's in good shape. If you stuck my feet together in a pool, I'd probably sink to the bottom of the pool. <laughs> It or not. I'd be like, I can't kick my feet. Freak out and then die. Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. Listen online at KZOZ.com. For the California Fresh Pulled question, uh, be local, shop local at California Fresh Markets, Pismo and Slow. So uh, what are, you, are you thinking that you might uh, want to go clubbing? See that this survey uh, that you uh, put up here says that uh, the average age of of, of, pe- of the the average age to stop going clubbing is thirty seven. I'd say that's about seven years too old. That's not my poll question, bro. Uh, oh, is this this is, is not this is not me. <laughs> this is not me at all. Because I had a poll question about the fair. But uh, I, this is a great question, right? And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. Because we we were on vacation, and maybe vacation is different. We were staying at a resort that had a club called Jaguar, and we had Jaguar. a bunch. We had a bunch of uh, you know cousins and uh, someone that were in their twenties. Hey, by the way, uh, happy cousins day! Oh, today's okay. cousins day. We're not cousins though. I Can know. you wish me a happy? Cousins no, day? but you have. I cousins. do have a cousin. I don't have. I have one cousin, and I haven't talked to her since we were kids. Oh, is that right? I, and and that's it. That's uh, that's the only. Uh, I, I, like my daughter has got like six cousins that she's seen in the last two weeks. What happened to all your cousins? They die. I I just had the one. And and she's still around. I think she lives in like Boise or something like that. But I'm just not close with the Kingman side of my family. I see. So anyway, sorry you you mentioned cousins, and I read earlier. Anyway, the there. cousins are all in their twenties. They want to go. Mm-hmm. I have another cousin who's thirty five, and he's going to go. And I'm thinking like, no, there's no way. I look at my wife. I'm like, all right, going to a club. Like, what are we we're going? To? We're going to the Jaguar Club with all the kids. I'm like, no, you don't go places where a bunch of twenty year olds hang out because you feel like the old balls in the room. Mm-hmm. Does this ever happen to you? Yes, all the time. I love Whenever going I back go to and a I, bar downtown. Yeah. <laughs> It's starting to feel that way. I remember there was a bar. We would go to Black Sheep all the time. And then there was, I don't know, there's just, you know, it's kind of fallen off. Went in there, I don't know, six months ago. Looked around and going, oh, my God, when did everybody get so young in Mm -hmm. here? And then I was like, all right, where do the old people go? McCarthy's? Okay. Everybody's older than me at McCarthy's for the most part. So I feel very comfortable there. What bar bar do you feel most comfortable in? Is it McCarthy's? Yes, because everybody else there is is usually older than I am. So I still feel comfortable in Black Sheep. I'm still cool with black, black sheep. sheep. Is fine, but just happened to be the Friday night that I was down Creaky there because it pulls in tourists, so all ages go there. People think like like the tourists think that Creaky Tiki is like the uh, Margaritaville of San Luis Obispo, and it, let's face it, it kind of is right by default. So they go there, they like you know go back to that little tiki bar. They can drink the free. Yeah, drinks. see, that's a good one. I've been back there. Then there's it's just it's just tourists. Yeah, yeah but tourists. you know, like Motav. No, I'm not going to go there after like Can't nine o'clock. After nine o'clock on a Friday or Saturday night, that's just a two, the library next door. <laughs> no way. It's like what are these? What are they bring a bunch of uh, junior high kids in here. What's going on here? Huh? But yeah, the the old guys bars in town. You know that's why I miss Pappy McGregor's because that was a great spot to go out to on Monterey Street. Mm-hmm. And there was you know just kind of a good mix there. And uh, you know I, I think Pass is a little bit different because it doesn't have quite the same. Because there's nothing thing going a on. College sitting yeah, in the middle of exactly. the town. Exactly. So you don't have to. When you're in San that. Luis Obispo, you have a college sitting in the middle of the town. There's a, a a divide that you can't get away from of people that are transplants and people that are residents. Did you look at the results of this uh, poll, by the way? No, I haven't. I haven't don't, don't vo- do it. I haven't I even even voted in it. I want you to guess. All right. So the survey found the average age is 37 to stop going clubbing. All right. Which I don't know if I've actually ever been 
clubbing, but I've probably been places where people would call it a club. Uh, 25, 30, 35, or never are the choices, all right? Is well, I'm just going to go based you on never my too old, to old go clubbing? experience, and I'm going to say that, um, boy, I mean, 37 sounds about right. I mean, that just seems... That seems logistically like that is the correct answer. Nobody voted in our poll for 37. They I'm going to say 35. 35 is uh, got 17% of the vote. Uh, tw- 30 got uh, 29% of the vote. That's where I, where I kind of clicked in. Because I don't know. Once you leave your 20s, I feel like it's time to grow up and maybe... Wait, let me find guess. Find a sports bar Because people like to be younger when they go online. The answer is never. 41% of uh, people. Oh, yeah. Never, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> 93.3 KZOZ rocks Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. Did you catch Saturday Night Live this week? No. Okay. I don't. I think it's too soon because I think uh, Sean Spicer quit on Friday, mm-hmm. and so uh, if he resigned on Friday, I just don't see them having that bit ready to go by you know taping the next day or when they do it live uh, for Saturday Night Live. What bit? The the, the, the one with Melissa the McCarthy. Melissa McCarthy. Was bit. it a rerun? No, I don't know what it was. Because That's why I, I, I didn't see it's it. It's kind of was... rerun season for these television shows. Oh, is it? You know? Gosh. you get. I mean, how? Like, if Sean Spicer retires, you call up Melissa McCarthy. She calls up Saturday Night Live and says, I know you guys are doing reruns right now, but we got to get everybody. Yeah. we got to get the crew together. we got to go in and do this, right? He says that it's, uh, some of the bits hurt his feelings. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Here he is talking to oh. Sean Hannity. Now, you know, Sean Hannity, Fox News, super conservative, right? So you got to think of anybody. I give Sean back. Hannity credit. I've never, and this is the first time I probably have ever done so. Is giving I've Sean, never heard you say those Sean words. Sean Hannity credit. Are you smoking some over there? He hitched his uh, wagon to that Donald Trump train for, uh, for, in the early going. And, I mean, he's wrote that thing. Uh, he's continuing to write it to, oh, that's to this what, that's day. What, that's what Most him? people wouldn't. Most yeah. people wouldn't. Even even, even uh, Fox News people but, were, were, were very apprehensive smart. I mean, about, about getting aligned with, uh, with Donald Trump. Now, now, you know, Sean Hannity, man, he's got access to everybody at the White House well, yeah, because, because he was so loyal. Well, there's the that, and there's a whole audience out that, there that is that conservative. Just, that or just that screams is journalism Trump's right there, Trump. right? You know, go but, ahead and, 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 and make the people happy that have the power, and then you get the access, I right? don't know if you'd quite call him a journalist. I'd tell you he's a talk show host, much like Rush Limbaugh does. The exact same thing. Or some people would call him like a fluffer, because that's what I would call him. Uh, here's uh, Sean Spicer on Hannity talking about uh, resigning and how some things got a little too close. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm a prankster, so some of the, you know, I, I like a good Shucks. joke. I think when it's funny, it's funny. you got to laugh at yourself and, and accept that there are some self Was Saturday Night things. Live funny? Did you like that or did that bother I, you? I think there are a couple parts of it that were funny, but there's a little bit, there's a lot of it that was over the line. It wasn't just, it wasn't <laughs> funny. It was uh, stupid or silly or malicious. Uh, but there are some skits that I've seen on late night television that I had to crack up at. Uh, so sometimes <laughs> it can be funny. Some of the memes you have to have to have to laugh at yourself a little bit. Uh, but there are times when it goes from funny to mean, um, and and that's that's there's a difference when that happens. Um, now, I'd like to begin with the president's schedule. <laughs> 3 p.m., President Trump is going to meet with the leader from Central Asia, President... Oh, boy. Um, Almaz... Almaz Bek Atamad Yamed Bey. Okay, to discuss the unrest in Kahagastan. Specifically in... Jesus. So, right there. How tough does it got to be to where you resign from a job after six months on the job? Right now, I, I guess I mean, they brought a, a new, his. Uh, he got a new boss, and so that's and that's when he left. Now you know I don't know. You all, you all see these, you kind of figure out how things work. You watch these TV shows. Is that reality? Is it even close to reality? Probably not. But a lot of times when somebody comes in as a new boss and they don't want you underneath them, the thing they ask you is, you know, we want your resignation. And then you resign like you were left on your terms to save face. Mm -hmm. But what I don't understand, and I get Sean Spicer because I can get fired up from time to time. So I see you're a liar. You're a little guy. You're fiery. Just call me a liar. Um, sometimes you, <laughs> I think, you'll lie about things. I think you called me a little fiery and you came out liar, but anyways. You, you will lie about things sometimes. Uh, and so, uh, only if it's going to benefit me. Just like he did. Like, remember that one time when he, uh, <laughs> what's it? 
Confeffi? <laughs> Covefi. He said that uh, Covefi, there is a, he's like, oh, well, uh, a small group of the uh, uh, of the president's people know what Covefi is. Oh, I got so, it right here. So, Do you think people should be concerned um, that the president posted some of an incoherent tweets and that it then stayed up for hours? Uh, no. Why did it stay up so long? After, is, is no one watching this? No, I think the the. Uh, the president and a small group of people know exactly what he meant. <laughs> is he covering his own ass there? Because really, the reporter was asking him, like, wait, your job is to watch everything he does. Why did this stay up so long? It made no sense. He's like, oh, no, no. They know. They know. Wait a minute. Like, what is Covfefe? Like, what does he mean? What is Covfefe? Maybe that was a code word for him to uh, signal to, I don't know. But I'm going to miss these press conferences. I'm going to miss Sean Spicer. I'm going to miss Melissa McCarthy playing Sean Spicer on Saturday Night Live. I know. That's what sucks about it. <laughs> it was so good. It was so spot on that it's like, wow, you just tuned in to see how much of an artist. Now, they, they could get, they, I mean, if like you said, if they rushed back and she was to do like the next couple weeks or something like that, they would get that much more mileage out of it, but that's about it. I mean, you, maybe this next week you could do it. That's that, it. That's it. Then, yeah. yeah but this, like it's like got to be a like big a build. farewell, up. some kind of big farewell yeah. to to Sean Spicer. But neither one of us have heard anything about this. You know so what You know what would be awesome? If we do. Is if um, to kick off in the fall, they had Sean Spicer host an episode of Saturday Night Live. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. See, what else is he going to do? He doesn't have to speak. He doesn't have to speak on behalf of the White House anymore. See, this is my problem with Sean Spicer. Yolo. He's going to go on and do all these interviews now, and it's only going to make him look pathetic and desperate. Like I don't see any positive coming out of any of the interviews, including the one he did with Sean Hannity. So what? I think you just walk away from this and you go on and you live your life and you find something else. Exactly. To do. You host Saturday Night Live with <laughs> Melissa know. McCarthy. Or Sean Spicer. I don't know. Maybe that's the only way to really kind of laugh at every yes. laugh it in the face and just and then just kind which of which has always away been his thing. Is like is like when he he the fact that people make fun and you could learn a lesson from this really okay the the fact that people make fun of him and he gets all riled up when people make fun of him <laughs> is the reason why people make fun of him. Okay. I just when I think of Sean Spicer, I see Melissa McCarthy as Sean Spicer. I don't even see him. So. When I think of Sean Spicer, I think of a young Jeremy West wearing an <laughs> I Heart Boys bikini. <laughs> I'm glad then, that that is just try, ingrained into your try mind. Frantically to erase it and expunge <laughs> every piece of evidence of it right. from the internet. There's no, and all of you that have the photos on your phone and you like to post it every time. Did I tell you what happened with the Costco gas guy when it. I was leaving on vacation? Oh, no, no. <laughs> what uh, happened at Costco? Uh, so uh, this actually has uh, everything to do with uh, something that I'm keeping a, a close eye on. Tim Tebow Tattoo Watch. <laughs> if you remember the day that we went on vacation... Uh, Tim Tebow had a really good uh, day oh, before yeah. that. He had like he had like cracked a home run, walk off home run, walk off home run, first yeah. at bat or something. And uh, for the Port St. Lucie uh, Mets, and ever since then he's actually had um, a pretty decent run. He's hit four home runs over that period of time. That's been three weeks. So I mean, it, it was a while back, but. Um, I was pumping gas over at Costco, and the attendant comes over. You know, the guy that wears the vest. Yeah, comes over and he goes, "Hey, I just heard that." Uh, Tim Tebow hit two home runs, stole two bases, and uh, went three for four today. <laughs> and I look at him, I'm like, great. Oh, God. You know, as it is, I'm here at Costco. The wind's always howling like a son of a bitch over here. And I can never get these gas pumps to work right because they always click off. So I have to sit here and I have to hold it. And now you're giving me this good news? And uh, But really, what else I does laugh. that guy do all day, right? I, I laugh. He waits for somebody to honk their horn so he can assist Apparently him. listens to us until about 10. <laughs> And, uh, and I laugh, and I said, yeah, I'm sweating it a little bit, you know, just a little small talk. And then he brought up a very good point. He said, you know, you might have some uh, ground to stand on if you want to back out of this t uh, tattoo thing. I said, what do you mean? Here we go. Settle down, Sean. Okay? Settle down. No, we have a bet. We shook on it. We have a deal. I know, but we also had a deal, and you reneged on that deal. And that deal was to what? wear the I Heart Boys bikini and take have video taken of you do it uh, to while while you were doing it. 
You have you have erased that video. No, that is not true. From the, the internet. This, I'm sorry, Mr. Gas Attendant. I know you're wrong. I, there I was, was never an agreement. There would be video or photos. I just had to come to work in an I Heart Boys bikini, uh -huh. and there was all that other stuff was not talked about. There was no negotiation. There was no contract verbal. Uh, or sign. Social media presence? Yeah, there was nothing. There's not, yeah, a, there yeah. was not a that's social just media? Something, that's just something I realized that I walked into that I should have thought of ahead of time. So I had every right to go in and do that because that was never a part of the deal. He said that you did not hold up to your end of the bargain oh, by care what he said. erasing the video No, because from, that wasn't part of the deal. From the internet. And then that video should have uh, lived on forever because that was part of your embarrassment from whatever it was that no. you lost. Oh, it was a weight loss challenge uh, that you lost. Uh, at the time. Half a pound, too. Oh, so mad. Yeah. Um, I went drinking the night before. So we, apparently yeah. he's upset that, that you can no longer see you in an <laughs> iHeart Boys bikini. Keep it local. Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. 93.3 KZOZ rocks. Just 25 minutes away from your opportunity to get qualified for that $200 to uh, Firestone 805 and the VIP tour uh, for Ford to go up to the uh, new renovated brewery. You make you made an admission to me uh while we were in playing the police there, that you had heard over vacation the fact that uh, the the Met said that they're not going to bring Tim Tebow up to the the big the, to the show uh, b before the end of the season. Yeah, yeah. The general manager came out and said uh, that uh, this this wasn't going to happen in seventeen. Um, well, so then, um, see, my whole thing is I've been banking on as long as it doesn't happen this year, it'll never ever happen. That's that's what I've been because of his age. Because the, where they say the, uh, the, like the grains in the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. I mean. Well, that's very true. I mean. You're going to have Jesus he, on your side, but, but it look, don't matter. But look, <laughs> look, from the beginning when he started a year ago to where he's at today, I mean, he's actually playing some pretty good baseball now. He, yeah. Granted, it's a lower night, league. But. Night, night before last, he homered and had a double. He's had four home runs since he got called up to the, uh, Port St. Lucie. Yeah, so, I mean, and who knows? You know, just because the GM comes out and says that, he might just be wanting to get the media off his back. Quit asking me the stupid question. Is Tebow going to get brought up? Is Sean and Spicer going to get a job as the general manager of the Mets? <laughs> what should Sean Spicer's next job be? What would you like to see Sean, Sean Spicer do <laughs> as his uh, next career move? Oompa Loompa in the next remake of Willy Wonka. He could be the head Oompa Loompa, the one that's mad. He's not a tall guy, is he? No, no, he's short. Um, he's fiery. I mean, he's got total short man's complex. So, I mean, I'm guessing he's short. I, I don't know. I can see uh, he's him. always standing behind a podium, so we don't know how tall he actually is. I could see him being a, 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 a Major League Baseball Wouldn't it blow skipper? you away if you met Sean Spicer and he was like six feet tall? Yeah, you that would be, would be like, well, no, you're no, not really him, are you? You're not. No, uh-uh. You just look like him. Because I think the camera makes you look tall. When, and then you meet people, and, and then you're like, oh, my God, they're actually very, very short. Is this on Google? Uh, next job for Sean Spicer. <sighs> See him running out, arguing with the referee. Of course, I don't know how much he knows about baseball. It could be a... Uh, be a promoter, like a fight promoter. Maybe he could work. <laughs> five was, nine. Would it, he's not five nine. Yeah. Oh, he's taller than I am. Yeah, I don't think so. Well, you're five eight and three quarters. Is that what you said? Five seven and three quarters. I'm five eight if I have my shoes. I know on. you're something in three quarters. I'm five seven and three quarters. A barefoot standing on the floor. Yeah, uh, hanging out the playground with the kids the other day. It was uh, kind of interesting because um, uh, one of the cousins comes up to me and says, "I'm four and three quarters." I was like, wow, that sounds a lot like Jeremy describing his height. Smart kid. Yeah, so you're like Knows a, how to break you're it like down. like a four-year-old. Uh, <laughs> Haley, Idaho. I'm sorry, Haley, Idaho. There is a Haley, Idaho. Haley, Florida. Ever been there? Uh, me? Yes. No. That's good. You might want to stay away or you might end up getting uh, sh shot. What do you think that noise is? Um... Well, obviously, the gunshot. Okay. And then there's another noise that's hissing there. Do you have any idea what that noise would be? There's a guy shooting out my tires. There's a guy shooting out my tires. <laughs> I'm at work, working in the area of Hialeah. Oh, um, 684 Southeast 5th Place. 
<laughs> to be honest with you, I thought it was a guy shooting at a beehive. <laughs> no. Because of all those... <laughs> yeah. No, this is a guy that got pissed off that the AT&T truck was in front of his house. All right, so this guy's name is George, okay? 64 years old. He's retired. And you know what? You know, he's had to put up a lot of crap his whole life, right? Because, you know, now he's retired. And, you know, he's just tired of dealing with crap. It's, life should be easier. So you move to uh, Haley, Florida. And uh, next thing you know, the AT&T truck's in front of your house. And they're working on some lines. And uh, he comes out and he says, hey, man, I don't like you guys in front of my house. Huh? Can you please move your truck? Move your damn truck! And uh, Derek... Get Ta- off my lawn! Derek Taylor, who is one of the AT&T you know, workers there that is that day, says, oh, I'm sorry for the inconvenience, sir. You know what? We're going to move it as soon as we get done with the work. Well, that's when old George goes back into his house and grabs a big gun, by the way. This might be a three fifty seven, uh, And starts blasting, blasting away at tires. He shoots one truck and then he moves to the next. There's a guy shooting out my tires. There's a guy shooting out my tires. I'm at work, working in the area of Hialeah, um, 684. Who's he talking to? He's just, I think he's just talking into the camera because he's taking a video. All right. Now, so he didn't think to call 911 when a guy's shooting him. He eventually does. He decides to go, like, what, on Facebook Live? He eventually does because George gets arrested. But right now, yeah, he's on uh, Twitter Live. Whatever. Remember Twitter Live? Oh, that's uh, not cool anymore. Periscope? Periscope. We used to be it. I like Periscope. So he's just shot out four tires on the first truck. Now he's walking about a half block away to the second truck. Police. Um, he's shot sitting out there. Huh? <laughs> Six, eight, four. Oh, maybe he's on the phone. Fifth place, okay, Miami, good. Florida. Good for him. Um, there's a guy shooting out the tires. And he shoot, he's shooting, shooting the engine on the trucks and everything. <laughs> I'm like thinking this is probably not the safest place to be standing since this crazy right, no son problem. of a bitch has got a gun and he's shooting, just shooting the truck. Uh, three, 305, 331. Then he can turn around and shoot you. Wait, so is he in the truck when he's, when he's shooting? No, or no, this is shooting, the guy talking. An actual gun. An actual gun. Video a down the street. But an actual gun. He, he's shooting out the tires. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because the old guy is just like. He's just like, it's not like he's doing it from inside the house like a sniper. No, no, he walked, he walked out, out to the truck. Shot off four tires like, boom, on the first one. Boom, boom. Turned around. Uh, hey, at least he was shooting at close range. He was he was efficient with his rounds. Yeah, I mean, and then, he's, and then he walks down to the second truck and he starts reloading. He I'm pops it you, out. This stems not, this has nothing to do with the cars being parked out in front of his house. This has everything to do with the fact that he's had to be an uh, AT&T customer for so many years. <laughs> Because surcharges piss you off, and I, I'm not I'm not singling out AT and T, okay? And this goes for any, it doesn't matter if it's a cable satellite, yeah, any, anybody, any, yeah. any utility, oh, any anything that they add charges. I thought onto. it was nineteen ninety nine a month. Oh no, that's when you bundle. Yeah, that means you have to buy five other things at nineteen ninety nine a month, mm-hmm. and then oh yeah, there's a there's a connection service. Five fee. Five other things. There's a service service fee. Four of those you will never use. You got to pay taxes on all those, and then there's also that county fee that you have to pay. That at that point, you're like, where's my gun? I'm gonna go find one of your trucks. <laughs> Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. Listen online at KZOZ.com. Hey, what's your name? Tim. Hey, Tim, how do you properly chill? I properly chill with my wife at the local beaches with a cold 805 or DBA. Or DBA, huh? What beaches do you, yeah. what, which local beaches do you like to go yeah, to? Pismo, Avila. Yeah. You know, wherever we hang out in our days off. Avila, it's so much. I'm okay. I'm a beach snob. I don't like a lot of people. I don't like a lot of outside people. And every time I go to Pismo, I was just there last week. Dog poop right down the sidewalk. Like people can't pick that up. <laughs> they don't live here. You know. You know how it is. Okay. You have friends. You have family that visit. There's no accountability if you visit an area and you go on vacation for that area. Uh, like if you're from out of town and you're walking your dog, there is it crosses your mind like oh, I don't live here, I don't have to pick up the beach. That's how they think about it. Tim, and Pismo yeah. is a very frequented beach by people that live from outside the area. Tim, do you actually just go with your wife and grab a cooler and just sit on the sand and watch the ocean? Yep, that's here. Just huh? hanging out. That sounds relaxing. Yeah. Hold on the line. We'll get you all set to go. You know what I'd like to do. Uh, I think Sean Spicer's next job should be Beach Patrol uh, in Pismo Beach. <laughs> he should be working down there. He can be a hard ass. Yeah, I want him on the. I want him hey. down there on the Embarcadero, down there uh, by all the shops. Hey, let me see your ID. Hold yeah. on a second. This says you're from Fresno. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I want him on uh, dog poop patrol. I want him carrying little dog poop bags. Hey, hey! Pick up that poop. Hey, I know you're not from here, but God, look after the place. Why don't you? <laughs> 
Jeez. We need a little hashtag Spicer movement in Pismo Beach. Get things, crack that whip a little bit. Maybe he should be the next mayor of Pismo. Honest to God. I don't know who the mayor of Pismo is. Honest to God, I think his next job, his next job is going to be, he's going to have a radio talk show. Because Furman did it. Didn't Mark Furman do it? Oh, gosh. Well, yeah, but it, in Idaho. In but that's what these... Northern Idaho. Yeah, but still, I mean, there's a place. In, in a little town called, I think, Sandpoint. All you have Idaho. to do is look at the map and see where Trump uh, performed exceptionally well uh, during the election. And and all of a sudden, the so- Sean Spicer show comes up in, I don't know, Omaha, Nebraska or somewhere. I don't, I don't even know where Trump did really well. Somewhere in Wisconsin. Didn't he? One of the states he won that he, he wasn't really supposed well to really well just about everywhere. Wisconsin? A little bit. Anyways. Enough. Western Pennsylvania? I think Western Pennsylvania he owned. West, Western Pennsylvania. A little bit of Ohio. Florida. The Sean Spicer show in Florida. Yeah. He could do it from the... Yeah, I think it'd be better uh, parking lot patrol than Pismo Beach. Well, yeah, for uh, you and I. But, I mean, he's got to... For everybody here. He could be the new mayor of, 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 of the Central Coast. Sean Spicer. I don't know how well that would be. Hashtag received. spice it up. That would be the thing. I could see the dude doing a radio show. <laughs> I really could. Uh, all right. We got uh, you some 805 gear. Hold on the line. And don't forget, we also have uh, you qualified for that $200 gift card as well as the VIP tour for four. Uh, so you uh, go properly chill. You want to find out how to properly chill with an 805? Go to 805beer.com. Have you been paying attention to this Michael Orr thing? Remember the movie The Blind Side? Yes. The movie that was about that guy? Right. That guy? Michael Orr, he's no longer in the National Football League because of an incident that uh, stems back to last April with an Uber driver. Oh, I didn't know about this at all. Oh, my gosh. This yeah. guy's big, though. This, he was like a big lineman. Well, yeah. I mean, he was his, Giant. Job, his job was to protect the quarterback. Now, when the blind side came out, 2008, 2007, oh, boy, somewhere could, around yeah, there. I'd have to look that up. It's been a while. And uh, really good story, right? We all liked the story. Uh, we thought, wow. Cool story of a guy doing well for himself. But the entrapments of fame, the NFL, and possibly some concussions maybe changed the way Michael Orr um, has conducted himself. Um, 2009, yeah. 911 dispatchers in Nashville got a call back on April 14th from a guy named Germa Burkus. He is the... Uh, Uber driver for Michael Orr. His name's Germa? Germa. Okay. He says, I'm being attacked right now. He just attacked me. Shortly thereafter, after, uh, he exclaimed that Michael Orr bit him on his back. Okay? Okay. Now, he turned himself into Nashville police on misdemeanor assault citations. This is according to the Charlotte Observer back, you in, have to understand. back in May. So think, this is two months er, er, ago. Okay. Think about this. I mean, okay, I bite you in the back. Fine. All right. I have a pretty normal sized mouth. Some people would even say I have a little bit of a big mouth. But Michael Orr is a giant man. He's like 6'8 or something, 6'9, 6'10, 7 foot, whatever he is. He's got to have a giant set of jaws on him. Here's, he, here's, could probably, he could probably put his whole sh- your whole shoulder in his mouth. Here's what is not okay. The fact that he's biting anybody's back. Well, no. We, that is weird behavior, okay? You, you don't just, bite. Uh, if, you're, if you get in a fight with somebody, uh, uh, what, sometimes you got to bite. On what list of priorities does biting them on the back Listen, come down? You're the father the of a young child and you teach her not to bite. It's, I'm sure the conversations come up more than once, right? So, I mean, this is, this is fresh in your mind. But sometimes, if you're in a situation and you need a, you, that Uber driver goes rogue, you need to be able to bite him. I would never think to bite somebody in a, in a fight. No, I'm kidding. But, yeah, you would think strangle, poke, outside of punching the obvious and kicking, you know yeah. what I mean? Or taking someone to the ground and subduing them. Not biting. Or family, biting family is, jewels. You know? Biting I mean, is something- when... You have no other option because your hands are tied, your legs are tied. You can't do anything else. You bite. It is the last thing that you do. So what? So <laughs> I can't imagine the Uber driver. Uh, by the way, can you imagine in your minivan? Burke when- said that he pushed and kicked him following a dispute over the fare, over the ride fare, and which I don't understand how that works. Is an Uber do all that? Uh, for you, I mean, uh, maybe uh, Michael doesn't know about that. So, what happened to Michael Orr? Is he uh, was he arrested? Well, he was he was released by the Panthers. Um, he is scheduled to appear in court on assault charges on Halloween of all days uh, in Nashville, based on the claims of uh, violence towards the Uber driver. He was uh, ordered by Michael Orr to pull over 
at a Mapco gas station so him and his friends could urinate. That's when um, he saw the fare, or he, uh, he he told them they weren't going to need a ride after that. And then he got a fare, he got the fare, and they got mad. And that's when it all went down. He called the driver a derogatory, homophobic term several times and threatened uh, him with physical violence. Um, and this is just all bizarre behavior. The biting, the homophobic slurs. Probably has something to do with something they like to call alcohol. The not understanding of the Uber fare, the alcohol, the, probably played a role in this, okay? But he sat out the final 13 games of last season with a concussion. That's major sitting out for a concussion, Okay. That's what the he was. He was released by the Panthers. So you're going there. You're going to say it's of more likely part of course. Of I'm con, going con, there. Concussion versus he bit maybe, somebody on the back. Of course, dr- I'm going there. He was drunk. It doesn't matter at what time and point in time does it come into your rationale that the best way to protect yourself or in, inflict a, a harm on somebody else is to bite them on the back of all places. <laughs> That's hard to get on to, you know? Like, if I take you and I grab you and I bite your arm, well, at least I got something to try into, you know? The back is, like, the biggest part of anybody's body. What would you do how with somebody? You, how can you get... Uh, well, he pushed him to the ground face down, and he got on his back, and he bit him. Uh, why wouldn't you bite his neck, then? Something you could get a hold of. That's probably a good thing he didn't. Did, by the way, did he take any flesh? At least Mike Tyson, when he bit the ear, the ear's something that's biteable. The back, you can't bite the back. Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. 93.3 KCOZ rocks. Have you ever been in a fight? Like a fight where you needed to protect yourself? Like a situation that, I mean, you know. I was in the worst. I mean, this is the worst, but I'll be. I'll tell you about this story. Because it was second grade, right? And okay, I think this, this counts. Kids, kids, you know, they just don't get the opportunity. And um, what, counts. Was, what was John's fighting name? For, fighting for your life in second grade. John Newman. John Newman was in second grade. And Hello, he was like Newman. one of these little bastards that would run up and, you know, he would mess with you. To the point where he, you know, he would get your goat, and then you know, I'd get all spiced up, and uh, that's hashtag Sean Spicer. <laughs> I, I by love the way, how not, you coined that term. <laughs> how, how long can we keep that rolling? Though? I, that's I'm telling the you, it should be on T-shirts and bumper stickers. Yeah, uh, but anyways, I'd Don't get all mess spiced with me. up. I'm a little spicy today, uh, and I would run around. And finally, I had a group of friends that formed a circle around this guy, and it was like, all right, now where are you going to go, John Newman? And I, uh, and you know me, you remember, I mean, I'm not a small guy now, but I was a little scrawny kid. Anyways, I walked you up. You mobbed a guy? And, and you m- well, m- mobbed I, I, Newman? kept running away. It was, it was day after day, week after week. It got ridiculous. Everybody wanted a piece of him. So everybody got together in a circle over by the uh, tether balls, and uh, he couldn't get away. And so I walked up, and I didn't even I didn't even say a word. I just went under under underhook. What's that underhook? So what's, a, even a what's, a, what's an underhook? I don't know. It's like there's there's a punch, and then if you come up, oh undercut, undercut. You did the undercut thing? right into the right into the belly. Bam. Oh belly. Okay, well, okay. guess what? Guess what? John Newman was a diabetic. I didn't know that. Yeah, so, so now I've beaten up a little diabetic kid. So I get hauled into the principal's office. Yeah, but it's diabetes. I mean, it's like you know, everybody's got it. It's not like that big of a deal. Right, you know, I mean, like, like it's not. It was like, kind of a big deal like back was, in like eighty. What was this? Eighty one, eighty two. It's not like he was dying of cancer. Well, you I know? Yeah, I don't know, but I felt really bad. I mean, My what? mom was just, you know, he got she to eat extra Doritos that so day because dis- his blood sugar got low. <laughs> exactly. That's what all I knew about diabetics. They got cookies and Doritos all anytime they wanted to in class, and they didn't have to ask permission. They just pull it out of their backpack and eat it. And the rest of us sat there and watched them. Go, oh, man, I want this. But anyways, so I had to miss out on going. He to, wouldn't bring enough to share with the class, is I what got, you're saying? I got in a lot of trouble. And that um, made you mad? So you, uh, my dad was actually kind of proud because he, he knew this kid was well, a little shame bastard. On, shame on the uh, administrators at the school, but actually. I had to miss out on the, one of the best field trips ever, uh, Pioneer, Pioneer Field, Pioneer Park, I, Pioneer Farm, Pioneer Farm. It's Pioneer Farm. That's where you go back to what it was like in the 1800s, and they have the, the wood forge, and oh. they have all that stuff they used okay, to do. And so here's the thing. They didn't have anybody to watch me that day because I went to this hillbilly school. So I had to go on the field trip and watch from the bus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It probably was the best punishment ever. That is, a, that I is the best punishment. And ate my freaking peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And uh, the entire time you had to watch from the bus, and I had to sit there and watch from the bus. It was just awful. And then, uh, yeah, and then I never got in a fight again. Because so you, I didn't want to get screwed you, out of. You a field had trip. your opportunity. 
and you decided to go uppercut into the belly of the diabetic. It did feel good to do it, though. At I didn't know he was diabetic time, at the time, all when right? When you ran through your list of things to do, where did biting his back come in? <laughs> never thought of biting Come up him. on the list. Never. I was That's never a biter. That's why this Michael Orr thing is weird, <laughs> yeah, okay? It is strange. I agree with you. It's strange that a grown-ass man. bite a guy on the back. Who's 6'10". How, we got to look, how, how, look him up and see how tall he is. Because I got to know, because it's driving me nuts. But he's a giant, all right? This is the, the kid that was in the movie the blind side, all right? So, you know, he goes on to play in the NFL. You're an NFL football player, and this, you're, you're getting driven around by a little pipsqueak you Uber four. driver named Germer. Or what was his name? Germ? <laughs> I mean, and you bite him? No, yeah. you, you take your one hand. He's only 6'4"? Yeah. Oh, but he's like over 300 six pounds. 6'4 is big. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. huge, okay? You toss this guy's head around like a basketball, and then you bite him? That is very strange. So, I'm telling you, it wasn't, it's not a concussion. But you bite him on the back. I don't know if it's a concussion thing. Maybe it's tied in. I'm pretty sure the alcohol had something to do with it. Maybe he got spiced well, can't, up. Couldn't, couldn't it be possible that the alcohol had something, something to do with it, but the concussion has something to do with it, too? And like maybe he did spice. It all? Maybe he did spice. <laughs> Stop not, with the not spice. Not Sean Spicer. Stop but with the spice. You, you are way too, way too into <laughs> the word spice today. What's up, Joel? Okay. Well, how old were you when you got in this fight? Oh, like I said, I was, uh, I was probably, I don't know, seven, eight years old. Oh, seven or eight years old. Okay. Okay. Nothing in high school, right? No, I said it was in grade school, yeah. Second grade. Oh, grade school. Oh, they geez, don't, they, don't, they don't take high school kids to Pioneer Farm. It's like a petting zoo. <laughs> be boring. We were boring, I guess. Anyway. Did you did you do high, uh, uh, field trips in high school? Once high, once high school came along, there there was no field trips. We didn't get a I feel no like, field trips. Yeah, no they all wrapped trip. up in junior high. <sighs> in fact, that's why I signed up for choir is because the, you got to go to like an overnight field trip where there was going to be lots of other girls, singer girls. At, Never uh, had a field trip. Central Washington University. Sorry, Joel. Have a good day. Wait, did you hook up with choir girls? Yeah. Did, did it work? Yeah. Because they were always kind of like the nerdy girls, too, you know? I mean, like, because they were singers, you know? Yeah, yeah, and They were, like, yeah, drama yeah, girls yeah. and stuff like that. But, yeah. Uh, I remember Allison McKenzie. Uh, nobody even knew her name. I just happened to have a couple classes with her growing up. She was a choir girl? She came back from her uh, junior year to her senior year. Oh, and everybody knew her name? Oh, my God. She lost the glasses. She lost, like, 20 pounds. She filled out. And she was I was just like... It. She was gonna, She was out to set the statement for her final year. Yeah, in high yeah, school, yeah, yeah. Brett Teejan was always after her, kind of, because he couldn't get anybody else. And then I saw them together and I went oh my god he just hit the jackpot but <laughs> Brett was an idiot and he screwed it up she 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 well, yeah because she got good looking yeah, well, and she she found out that baseball players wanted to I mean I hated baseball players in high school baseball players got all the girls every single one of the hot girls went to a baseball player and I'm like what do you want this douchebag for she was tobacco that's gross but it sucked uh, maybe that's why you didn't go on field trips anymore in high school because you got to travel if you were a part of sports or something like that yeah yeah I did that yeah. so you like if you joined a club then you were rewarded with a trip somewhere. Like if you're in debate, you got to go to the debate. Can you imagine club. being the teacher or chaperone that has to take a bunch of juniors around? I mean, here we are, 15, 16 year old kids. Brutal. They're going to be nothing but trouble. Brutal. Like that is the worst job in the world to have to d take high school kids somewhere. But we didn't get field trips anymore in high school. How many choir girls? Just, just one. Just one. Do you remember her name? No, I don't. I don't remember anybody's name. This is a long time ago. That's not true. You remember people's names that all was the high time. school. Are you making this up? I remember... Uh, <laughs> I don't know why you would brag about a choir girl, though. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's, okay, I believe it, 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 I, I don't remember her name at all. And it was like, you know, he's like, oh, this just happened because we were both in choir. <laughs> and I just, felt, I just felt bad about wait, it. Wait, wait, where did this happen at? It happened at school. Okay, this... Oh, it wasn't on a field trip. Yeah, and when I say... I mean, high school hooking up is not like... You know, adult hooking what, up. Were you guys in the closet in the we, choir room? Yeah, exactly. So we, you had to come out and make closet? out a little bit. <laughs> it was like it was like you know, like five minutes in, in the choir closet, making out, maybe some heavy petting, and that was it. That was it. And then the bell rang, and we're like, "Oh God, we got." I get never out made out with a girl in the closet in high school. That's pretty cool. Well, it was not. I, like, I, it wasn't I, a closet. If I could go back, I would do that. It wasn't a closet. It was like it was, breakfast it was, club. Stuff. I guess it was a closet because that's where you kept all the like music and stuff that you had to read yeah. that you sang off of. But um, yeah, we like uh, hung out after class, and the choir teacher was also the rugby club instructor, so he had to bounce right afterwards to take the rugby club somewhere. And we were like, "Oh yeah, we're just hanging out here and uh, work on some stuff." And then Boobs. kids started drifting out and. And then we were the two left, and we we're like, hey, you know, we'll put some sheet music away. <laughs> <laughs>
Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. 93.3 KZOZ rocks. We're looking for uh, Sean Spicer. He needs a new job. We need to figure out what he's going to do. I still think bus driver would be a good fit since he's already kind of built up with the bus driver ass. Uh, we had uh, Carney come in. Also, uh, TSA you, agent. By the way, how do you know what Sean Spicer looks like below the podium? Well, I have no idea what he, what oh, he looks I've like. I've seen him out walking around. Really? Yeah. Okay. Of course, I always tell you that I'm picturing Melissa McCarthy because... <laughs> yeah. Which <laughs> we no. know she's got a gigantic... Yeah, she's got a big rump. Lower. But, but, uh, lower region. Yeah. What about TSA agent? Yes. I, yeah, can, it, it'd like, be good. See, I, I can see him like being head of the TSA. And he'd probably be pretty good at... With it, I mean, anything's better than what we've gotten from the TSA, right? Where's that? No, that I'm thinking more of the guy where, that's uh, doing where they the try inspection. to sneak 62 uh, uh, like guns and knives past TSA, and 59 of them got through. Like, the, the, you need a, you need a, a shake up there. No, I'm thinking more of the guy that stands there at the X-ray that you walk into. It's like, sure, no, 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 no. you know, it's you like, can't go from White House press secretary to like working at McDonald's, Jeremy. And that's what you're basically equating it to. I mean, a job's a job, right? With that attitude, you might as well be a liberal, sit home and collect welfare. Well, I think he, that would be his best bet at that point. <laughs> it's to, to go ahead and and not take a job and just collect the checks that come in from being a retiree a of the, as a White House press secretary. Because this TSA thing is bugging me. The, the, when you walk into the x-ray, like you put all your stuff in, you show the gate person there, not the gate, but the, the agent, your license and your boarding pass, and then there's no one in front of you, and you walk into the machine like, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. You're going to have to back up. We are not ready for you. I'm like, okay. So then I take a step back, and I, w- I wait. Wait till and you're instructed. Like, okay. All right. Come forward. I'm like, well, I could have stood in there the whole time. Like, nothing has changed. You're not doing anything. That guy has already moved on. Wait till you're instructed, The machine's sir. already done its thing. It's like, you know. It, you- what it comes down to is they like to tell people what to do. And after being told what to do for the last six months... Uh, I'm sure Sean Spicer would like to tell some people what to do. So maybe a TSA agent is not a bad fit for Sean. All right. Hi, go ahead. You're on the air. What do you got? Jeremy, if you think it's just liberals that take advantage of government programs... Why do Let, I, like welfare, I knew? I knew the, you're sadly mistaken, my friend. I knew the one thing I was going to say was to piss off somebody who was liberal, and then everybody was not even paying attention to what we're talking about now. Now it's all about liberals versus conservatives. Thank Dude, you. Dude, my grandma was a big time conservative, bro, but she still took advantage of government programs. There's plenty of conservatives that 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 take advantage of those programs. Well, anybody, any, now, any, now it's true. It's true that liberals did put in a lot of those programs, put through a lot of those programs, but. But they, all sorts of people take advantage of them. Just saying, you know, I just want to educate you a little bit. Go ahead, bro. Just keep, keep, keep going. <laughs> keep educating me, please. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, that's all. That's all I got to say. You're just saying that's all? That didn't sound very educated to me. Even conservatives just, that have pu- public jobs, they take advantage of government programs. Like, anybody who has taken a government job takes advantage of government programs. Okay? I know. I'm That's just, the reason why you take government jobs. Just okay. messing with you. Just messing with all you liberals out there that are getting fired up. Apologize. All right. Thank you. I think it's a popular misconception that uh, people that suck off the teat of the government are only liberals. <laughs> Who made that assumption, by the way? I think you did. Things we didn't get to in hashtag form with Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. No, 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 no. It's a Monday. It's a Monday. Hashtag. I didn't, I didn't even go to Kid Rock last night. Yeah, so right? Hashtag no Kid Rock brain. Um, coffee infused bed sheets. Apparently, it's supposed to give you a better night's sleep. And the thing is, it's like when I smell coffee, it instantly wakes me up. But they're saying that they're using used coffee beans that would otherwise be thrown away. Can we get out of I mean, come on. This is ridiculous. Like, what's more organic than coffee beans? Like, you put it in the ground. It's great for the dirt. I mean, it's like you're going to... Okay, so they're taking these coffee beans that have already been ground and used to make coffee. And instead of discarding them in the, in the ground, which is actually great fertilizer... They're, they're going to make them into bed sheets. Now, the bed sheets don't smell like coffee, but apparently there's something in it that's that you can't smell that is extracted while you sleep that keeps you in a more sound sleep. I don't be- hashtag, I don't believe any hashtag, of this. Hashtag, this sounds like something they're selling at the fair. Yes. <laughs> this is like hashtag as seen on TV. I mean, like, have you ever... There was this thing that was like some kind of... 
ancient uh, Asia treatment that you stuck on the bottom of your feet that uh, like would suck all the toxins out of your body uh, out of your body at night. You're right. supposed to sleep with them on. I and remember then that. Take yeah. them off. There's like socks or something you put on. And then night. it was like it was like totally debunked. They're like, yeah, this is no toxins out of your. All it does is get dirty while you're sitting there sleeping, and then it takes the oils off of your foot and makes it look like. You know, things are... It's actually doing something. Yeah, they don't sell those things anymore. Grant, chances are five years from now, they won't be selling bed sheets made out of coffee for probably a lot more money than a regular bed sheet is because it has no benefit whatsoever. Uh, you know, my folks are visiting and uh, my mom really wants to get these bamboo sheets. And I don't know much about bamboo sheets, but uh, apparently that is... I have a, a bamboo sheet. shirt. It's awesome. Is that right? Yeah. So uh, we're looking it. for every them at the fair. Wa- every time you wash it, it's softer. And they don't have the bamboo sheets at the fair, but they have the hotel collection sheets. And they're supposed to be, you know, 5,000 thread count. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I'm walking by it yesterday. Because, of uh, course, you go when you want fine sheets, you go to the county fair. I'm like, don't get suckered into this because uh, after two washes, mine were all balled up. And the guy behind the counter flips over and he leaves me this look like, shut your mouth. <laughs> and I looked at him. <laughs> gave him a little grin. I think I might swing back by that booth today. I love these guys. And it's like, I saw another woman. I'm like, oh, look at this. We got another one over here. And I was like, well, wait, wait a second. There's a guy in the other building next to us. He's got, oh, no, 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 no. Our stuff is much higher quality. His stuff is all imported. Our stuff is all made right here in the United States of America. I go, well, you have the same exact like sign. It says <laughs> hotel collection. Hotel. What, what are you talking about? Love messing with those people at the fair. Hashtag, do you want fries with that? Today is National Drive Thru Day. How does San Luis Obispo no. celebrate National Drive Thru Day? Well, you leave town. <laughs> you don't celebrate National Drive Thru Day. You take your money elsewhere. Today, you do not shop local in San Luis Obispo because it is National Drive. How do you celebrate drive throughs in, Nas- in San Luis Obispo? You can't. You have Can to we have to- walk throughs? I think they kind of do that at the Jack in the Box over on Santa Rosa. Is that what? They have a window over there. Yeah. And they're open 24 hours. But I don't know if that window is like, you know, like a walk up window type thing. Or it was just a part of the model because every fast food restaurant has a drive Well, it's like that McDonald's that's over off Foothill that's no longer McDonald's, the right. one that went out of business. Uh, they have it built with drive through windows. I mean, it's got drive through windows ready for it. You know, they were waiting for, like, the law to change, and they never did. They won't change. And it, they said, fine, we're, we, you guys beat us to this one. Uh, we're, we're going out of business. Maybe you kind of have a picnic in that parking lot next to the drive through windows that never got opened. That's how you celebrate drive through day today. Maybe go next door to the Cork and Bottle. I heard they got good hamburgers over there, actually, for being a liquor store. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Uh, no, you don't celebrate in San Luis Obispo today. You'll have to go outside. Even banks don't have drive throughs Some do. Some do, and the, 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 those ones, I guess, were grandfathered. Come to the five cities. drive throughs everywhere. Will we ever see a day in which a drive through will be in place where you can pull up, order food, get a milkshake, some fries, a burger, and then drive away in San Luis Obispo? Will it ever happen? What I like about drive throughs is you don't have to get all dressed up to go out of the house. Just get in the car, you go through the drive through you're good to go. Grab some grub. Bring it back to the house. Let me tell you, watch like, football. Last night, uh, we were uh, running around, r- doing all sorts of air, uh, errands. My wife was uh, working, so I just had uh, just the kids myself, and I had to feed them. And I purposefully did not eat out because I had to feed them. I went home and made something to eat because there was no drive throughs At the time, I was thinking, man, it sure would be nice to have a drive through because I could just run through the drive through and I have to take the kids out of the car, take them into a place, and just, you know, give them something to eat in the back seat while I'm running my Got errands. a guy on the phone that grew up here. And there's been times in the past that they've had drive throughs Go ahead, No. Man. We actually have had two drive throughs here. One was a photo mat where you'd, right there by, uh, I think it's Rouse now. Back then it was Lucky's. Mm-hmm. You could drive through and drop off your your photos. And then that same location turned into a drive through coffee shop which the city shut down after, I think, a year in business. Plus, when Applebee's was open, you could do curbside to go. But there you, did, go. you couldn't drive through. You just had to get out and walk in, right? No, no you would actually, at, you'd call in your order, and they'd deliver it out to the car to you. Yeah. But they obviously are closed. You could call it You could call it. When you call them when you're in the car, mm-hmm. and you're like, hey, I'm on the curb, I'm really lazy, I can't walk in, mm-hmm. can you bring me the They'll food? They'll bring it out to you. Chili's does it, too. 
I've done the chilies, but I walked my ass inside and picked up the food and took it to go. Thank you. I'm with you there. I like a good beer while I wait anyway, so I'm with you. Yeah, on that but one. I mean, I'm not anti drive through. Right? I want everybody to understand that. I'm not anti drive through. I think we yeah. should have them here. Yeah, absolutely. It's ridiculous. All right, thank you. What about the car wash? That's almost, that's a drive, damn drive through, isn't it? You get in the car, you drive through the car wash, and you leave. I need to shut up. I'm going to be. Pissed. If we lose Next that, you know, if we lose those car washes, I'm going to be pissed. We're getting car washes shut down. I'm going to have to quit blinding Good job, Sandy. Oh. It's time to play Nova Show. Hit that button. Yeah, the place that uh, the place that doesn't have you drive through your in your car, but they drive the, your car through. Yeah, shouldn't they pitch a fit? To get the other guys driven out because you're driving the car through? Because you get to sit in the car? The, because of the policy? I think they just don't want to pay the insurance to sit in the car because there's no reason you shouldn't be able to sit in the car at the one where they have you get out of the car. I think it's an insurance thing. They want to save on a little insurance scratch. Right? I mean, that's does that make sense? Like, why else couldn't you sit in the car? I don't know. I have no, uh, idea. no, the show today, we got uh, $25 to go to the Great American Fish Company in Morro Bay. 543-3693 are the numbers to get through. What is the go-to move when Jeremy gets in a fight? But even though it's in second grade. Well, yeah, in second is, grade, this was my one-time go-to move. This is his uh, best pitch if he was a pitcher. But he's getting in a fight, so he's a fighter. I had to sit on the bus and watch everybody have so much fun at Pioneer Farm. If you make Jeremy mad, watch out for blank. What's his specialty? The uppercut. The uppercut is correct. Yes. Why mess around with that jab crap? Go right for the uppercut. But you have to, like, when you do the uppercut, you got to make sure that the person's face, like, they're looking at the ground, right? Right. If you're going to get them with the uppercut in the face. Now, you did the uppercut in the stomach. Right into the stomach. How does that even happen? Ooh. Well, you're standing right there. You go right into the stomach. It's not quite upper. It's kind of just side. Just no. It comes up from underneath. Goes right in. Hits you right under the diaphragm. Knocks the wind right out of that. To get the full effect. He went right to his knees. Knocked the wind right out of him. It was beautiful, (laughs) beautiful stuff. I think I was eight. You ever been in a fight, Alex? I've been in plenty. (laughs) Oh, you're you're a fighter. You're a tough guy. What's your go-to move, tough guy? I was. (laughs) (laughs) You got smarter. It was more about just tossing them around. I would, because I'm a pretty big guy, and I would just grab them and then body slam them to the ground. And yeah, that's my. I've only been in one fight in my life, but I was able to body slam somebody. I used no. leverage, right. and I like I did like the. It was cool because it was like the WWE, like when you grab somebody by the arm. That works. <laughs> that's weirdly enough. That works. I, I always thought that was acting, but I tried it when the guy comes running at me. I was like, oh, I don't know what to do. So he like tried to jump jump on me, and instead of jumping, I, I stepped to the side, grabbed his arm, and threw him over me. He tried and, to jump on you. Yeah, and then I and then I and then I landed on him. Must not have been a very good fight. I landed on him, and halfway as I was like falling down, I was like, you know what I'm going to do? You're I'm an gonna, elbow. I'm going to take my elbow and drive it right in the back of his head. Yes, I'm going full on WWE here, <laughs> and it worked. Yeah. That's when WWE was really popping since I was like really watching that as a kid. Yeah. All right. And some of that stuff works, I guess. Well, yeah. we, we got uh, $25 for you, the Great American Fish Company for you, man. Thanks for listening to the show. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Hold on the line. We'll get you all set to go. Body slam. That's the best way. Just Body pick, slam and then pick, elbow drop. That's why you don't need, in order to be a good fighter, you don't need punching. That punching stuff's overrated. Let the ground and gravity do the work. The higher you can pick somebody up and drop them on the ground, the more it's going to hurt. Okay. The ground is harder than your fist ever will be. 93.3 KZOZ rocks Jeff and Jeremy in the morning.